All oh, right, so problem 34, we have, according to a recent report, customers who shop at a certain online store spend on average $1,500 a year at the store. So it's investigate whether the mean amount spent was greater than the reported average. An economist obtained the mean and standard deviation of the amount spent in the past year by random sample of 110 customers who shop at the store. All conditions for inference met, the economist conducted the appropriate hypothesis test and obtained a p-value of 0.25. So which of the following statements is the most appropriate conclusion to the events for the investigation? Okay, so um, remember the p-value is basically the probability that you would get results as extreme or more extreme if we assume the null hypothesis were true. So in here, in this example, the null hypothesis H O, our O B, that the mean would be fifteen hundred dollars. The true population mean is fifteen hundred dollars. Now the alternative is, you know, that the mean amount spent for the mean is going to be greater than fifteen hundred dollars. It's, it's actually more than fifteen hundred dollars. The mean amount spent by you know, this group of people or on this certain online store for um, these people. So the, the null is that the mean is $1,500. The alternative is that the mean is more than $1,500. Now, our p value is 0.25, which is 25%. So that's a pretty high value. And so we would basically not have strong enough evidence to reject the hypothesis. And if you remember, we always have like an alpha boundary. Like our alpha is usually by default 0.05 it doesn't specify. And so p value, this p value is much higher than 0.05. So we're not gonna um, say that we have missing evidence to reject the hypothesis. So let's see which of these would be better. Shop, no, there's convincing, no, there is not. So D, there is not convincing evidence that this is that the mean amount spent each year by all customers at the shop the store is greater than fifteen hundred dollars. So the answer would be D. E, there is not convincing evidence that the mean amount spent in, the mean amount of money spent each year by any sample person has been greater. Oh, so see, by any sample, they try to get all technical and smart. That's different. That's not, that's, you know, um, the sample, remember, is, is, was a, a group used to help estimate the true population parameter. But anyway, the answer is D for sure. Just don't get thrown off by that. Scientists working for a water district measure the water level in a lake each day. The daily water level in the lake varies due to weather conditions. And weather conditions. The daily water level has a distribution that is approximately normal with mean water level at, at 84.07 feet. And the probability that the daily water level in the lake is at least 100 feet is 0.064. So which of the following is the closest to the probability that on a randomly selected day, the water level in the lake will be at least 90? Okay, so here we got to do some calculations. So uh, let's let's have our normal distribution where the mean is 84.07. We don't know the standard deviation, that's what we're gonna have to figure out. And we're given that the probability that the daily water level in the lake is at least 100 feet is 0.064. Let's draw a visual. 84.07 is the mean, so it would be here. So 100, we can, let's just say it's over here. And then the, the, this area would be about 0.064. That represents the probability of the value being more than 100 feet. And we, now we want to find what's the, what's the probability that the value would be 90 or greater. So let's put 90 like somewhere over here. So we know it's greater than the mean. So essentially we want to find like that red area. So for this, basically the most straightforward way is to find the standard deviation. Because once you know the standard deviation, you can calculate the probability of X being more than 90. So for that, let's use a Z score. Z or standardized value is equal to that observation value minus the mean deviation. So we want to find the Z value where there's 0.064 area cell on right. So we can use a table. 
or you can just use their technology, which I'm gonna do. Go to distribution. Let's go to inverse mode. And what we have to enter here is the area to the left. So if there's 0.064 to the right, one minus 0.064, that would be 0.936. And this is a standardized normal curve, mean zero, standard deviation one. And so our, our Z value would be 1.52. So let's go 1.52 would be equal to, that's our Z. Just a visual, it's on, it's um, just to give you some reference point. The so 1.52 X would be equal to X, X is 100. Mean is 84.07. Move of sigma, standard deviation. So now it just becomes an algebra problem, which hopefully should be easy. Solving for sigma, multiplying both sides, and then dividing by this, divided by 1.52. So we have sigma would be so 100 minus 84.07 divided by 1.52. And get that. Sigma would be about 10.48. Standard deviation about 10.4. Okay, so now we just have to find the area to the right of 90 in a normal distribution with mean 84.07 and standard deviation 10.4. And for this, let's go ahead and use the distribution function and go to normal CDF in our calculator. Okay, we're gonna enter the lower bound or the left bound, which will be 90. Comma at the upper bound, very big area, very big number, the billion, the billion. Comma the mean, 84.07. Comma followed by the same nation. And we get about 0.2875. This whole area is about 0.2875. And so then our answer will be, looks like it's in the A. It's the water here. Like 36, the president of a large company recommends that employees perform on average 24 hours of community service each year. The president believes that the mean number of hours of community service performed last year was different from the recommended 24 hours. To estimate the mean number of community, of community service last year, the president obtained data from a random sample of employees and used the data to construct a 95% confidence interval from 20.37 to 23.49. If all the conditions for inference are met, does the interval provide convincing statistical evidence at a level of significance of alpha being equal to 0.05? To support the president believes that the mean number of hours the community service performed last year is different from what is recommended. Okay, so that felt like a long novel reading. Okay, so, but what we have here is a confidence interval of 95%. So let's think of this. Let's first draw like a normal distribution somewhat. And a 95% confidence interval is essentially saying that from the left side to the right side, so let's call this 20.37 and this side 23.49. The area all up in here be 0.95, which means that to each side of this confidence interval, you would have two and a half percent or 0.025. And let's see what's going on here. So let's look at these answers. So does the interval device is statistical evidence and that's a little significant. Support the president believes that the mean is different from what is recommended. Oh, I, I don't, I can't, how you even try to do this? I, well, it's, I like drawing it, so it's all right. I was thinking that they were going to have more um, complicated answers, but it, these are pretty straightforward. Um, so this is basically saying that we're 95% confident. But the true parameter lies in here. 
but the 24 is not in the air. 24 is outside of this interval. So since it's outside of this interval, we're basically going to have strong evidence, convincing evidence, because this because it's not in here. So we're if this is like a null hypothesis, we would we would reject the null hypothesis and, have, and say we have convincing statistical evidence to believe that the alternative hypothesis is true. But again, twenty four is not captured. So it would be B. The answer, our best answer, would be yes. It, it supports the president's belief because 24 is not contained in the interval. So there you go. Hope that helps.